Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I have got a great episode for you today. First of all, I this episode came out of but basically by request. So a couple of weeks ago, I was teaching the vir- first ever virtual confident wholesale bundlers workshop. And we noticed a common problem among all of us, we tend to overthink every little thing. And as we were going through the framework, there was a lot of questions regarding when it's time to move on to the next step. And so I joked about needing this overthinkers checklist and almost half the people were like, yes, I need that. So this episode is all about overthinking and how we move past these things into decision making, because that is really the big deal. But before we dive in, I have a special event announcement. Yes, an event. Can you believe it? Pandemic, all these kind of things. So we're talking about a specific event. I am going to the Dallas Marketplace trade show in the beginning of January. My business needs it. My mom and I need it. We need to go to the trade show. We like to go to trade shows and look at the new products and look at the new trends, meet with our reps and things like that. But despite the pandemic, the show must go on, right? So with all safety precautions in place, I'm going to do one day of trade show walkthroughs for anyone who feels safe and comfortable and wants to come, whether you live in the Dallas area or you want to come from out of town to go not only to the trade show, but also to do a personal walkthrough, I am going to be offering this to start our year off right. So where the Dallas marketplace, when Saturday, January 9th, uh, we're going to start the year off right, we're going to have small groups. So why why should you come? Um, to connect and meet with your sales reps that are in your area to touch and see products to get new ideas and instant access to things like opening your accounts and getting catalogs and learning to have conversations with wholesale vendors and develop those relationships. I can tell you during COVID, it's been so crazy, but it's been really, really great to be able to reach out to specific sales reps that I've been working with to be able to just call them and say, hey, I met you back in you know Dallas or Atlanta or you know, a few years ago. And having those relationships really helped us to switch gears a little bit during the pandemic to be able to sell some different things. So that's really important. So what's included with the trade show walkthrough? We're not going to be doing a full workshop. We're just going to be doing walkthroughs, but that's not all. On Friday night, there's going to be an optional happy hour meet and greet. We're going to do all that we can to keep you safe and to keep each other safe and healthy. So so, so social distancing, having a couple cocktails together, just getting together in a smaller group. And then a one hour walkthrough session with a maximum of three other people. So a total of me and three other people per walkthrough group so that we can kind of keep it small and intimate, but and safe and healthy, um, but also give you guys exactly what you need to be able to walk through the trade show, learn to have those bundle conversations, learn to deal with the rejection of some people saying no Amazon, and that sort of thing. And just collect catalogs and get um, get in touch with your personal reps. It's really just a great time of year. Also comes with a mini course of intro to wholesale. So the, so a mini video with all of the things that you will need, plus a workbook of materials, including email scripts, in phone and in-person uh, demos of those conversations. So if you're interested in doing a trade show walkthrough in January in the Dallas area, mommyincome.com slash walkthrough. There is only 15 spots for this because we want to keep it small and healthy due to all the crazy things that are going on in the world. So if you want a trade show walkthrough and you want to get a leg up on 2021 and get some wholesale accounts and just get going, then mommyincome.com slash walkthrough. So let's talk about overthinking. So we all do this. Analysis paralysis is real. The more you think about a problem, the worse you feel about it. And the worse you feel, the harder it is to make po- take positive action because emotions can cloud our judgment. That's just how it happens. So overthinking all, often involves ruminating over the problem and over the past and worrying about the future. Overthinking is not problem solving. It's not. Problem solving consists of thinking about the difficult situation and purposefully looking for ways to solve the problem. It's looking for viable options despite the difficulty that you're facing. So overthinking 
dwells on the problem and often automatically assumes that there's no viable solution to it. Overthinking is focusing on every single thing you don't have control over and then dwelling how bad that makes you feel. Honestly, we don't often overthink about all the crazy positive things, right? Those are easy decisions to make. I mean, like, hey, do you want tacos? Yes. The answer is always yes. You're not going to get me thinking, overthinking about whether or not I want tacos. It's always going to be yes. Even if I ate an hour ago, someone's going to say tacos. I'm going to say, yes, please. Where are they? I mean, that's just reality, right? We always, the easy decisions, the happy decisions are the ones that we don't tend to overthink, but we overthink the things that are giving us bad vibes, bad feelings, things like that. If any amount of time is spent on worrying and overthinking, it's not productive time. We need to be productive. Time spent overthinking will not enhance your life regardless of it's 10 minutes or 10 hours. How many times have you thought, wow, I really spent too much time overthinking that and I'm really happy about the decision that I made in the end because reality is we're not really focusing on those types of things. Instead, when we're overthinking, it's usually because we're focusing on all of the negative things. So here are some signs that you might be overthinking. You guys, let's be real. We can't change our habits. We can't change our thinking until we become aware that we're actually doing it. And even if we're aware, there are some solutions to fighting this bad habit because overthinking does not add any quality to our life. If you're thinking about problem solving and coming up with a creative solution, now that is productive. But overthinking is not going to enhance our life. It's not going to bring us joy. It's not going to bring us down. So here's a few signs that you're overthinking. If you've ever said any of these things to yourself, whether it's in your head or out loud or to other people, you we're all guilty. That's just going to be real. But just think about which ones, which one of these you're, you can relate to most. What if, what if, what if, what if? Often asking yourself the what if questions. Do you ever relive embarrassing moments in your mind over and over again and just beat yourself up about it? Do you remind yourself of your mistakes? over and over? Do you worry about things you have contr no control over? Um, hello, Amazon's algorithm. Hello, um, worrying about how fast they can get stuff checked in, worrying about potential suspensions online. Come on, we don't have control over these things. Worrying about potential outcomes. Do you have difficulty sleeping because you can't turn off your brain? Oftentimes when we can't turn off our brain, it's because of all the things that we have fear and worry about, things that are making us mad, things that are frustrating. We're not usually kept up at night thinking about all the wonderful, joyful things that are going on. Do you always assume the worst? Are you always running the worst case scenarios? Do you have fear surrounding making decisions for your business and for yourself? Do you ever say to yourself, oh, I need more information. I can't make this decision. I can't move forward with this bundle. I can't buy these things until I have more information. That's analysis paralysis. That's moving forward. Okay. I spend so much time dwelling on past events or worrying about the future that I often miss what's going on in the present. Yeah, that's me. Um, decisions, I've made bad decisions. So many bad decisions before I made the wrong one. So I'm scared to make more wrong decisions. Look, we can all relate to all of this overthinking. One way or another, we end up overthinking about something. It's easy for all of us to get caught up in overthinking. Fortunately, there's a lot of mental strength exercises that you can do to retrain your brain from overthinking into more of a healthier mindset. You can adjust your thinking by taking small steps. Hello, dream big, step small, small steps to replace your overthinking and become more productive. That way you can reclaim your brain power. You can reclaim your energy and your time and instead focus on problem solving rather than that. Of course, easier said than done, but here are some tips that you can take in order to move forward with curbing your overthinking. Take on the ants. And when I say ants, I don't mean the little black things running around or, you know, your mom's sister, your aunt, I'm talking about automatic negative thoughts. Is anybody's personality that automatic negative thought that the moment something comes across your plate, the first thing you think of is all negative? 
some of us are positive people. Some of us automatically have those negative thoughts, but usually we have those negative thoughts about things that we've had in our past. So this is a good way to at least acknowledge, admit, recognize, or become aware that you're automatically thinking negatively about a situation. Take a notebook and anything that's giving you anxiety or changing your mood, the first thought that comes to your mind automatically, just write that down if you're feeling in that place and try to evaluate why this situation is causing you these negative thoughts. Most of the time you can break down your emotions and see what you're experiencing and identify what you're telling yourself about the situation because you're telling yourself a story. Which story are you telling yourself? So let's break it down to the bundle. So the bundle, this bundle is not going to sell. So you're doing your research, you're overthinking, you've been through the steps a lot of times through the framework, and you're still just saying, I just don't know if this thing's going to sell. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about this. What if it costs too much? What if I invest too much money? You see the rabbit hole that we just fell down into? Now, I'm not asking you to not have negative thoughts. As a matter of fact, I'm not even asking you to go to the other side of the spectrum and have sunshines and rainbows and be like, oh, this is one's going to kick butt and I'm going to, you know, this is going to be my million dollar product or whatever. I mean, it's, it's really healthy to have positive success and tell yourself that, you know, things are going to succeed. But honestly, I'm just trying to shift you guys into neutral mode. So we don't have to always worry that the, all the sky is falling. And that's the negative um, ants that we're talking about, the automatic negative thoughts. But I'm also not telling you that you have to go over here and paint everything with, you know, rose colored glasses and the sun shines and rainbows. How about a neutral zone? So instead of saying this bundle's not going to sell, change the story, flip the script. Instead, catch yourself saying that and change it to, I genuinely tried my best. I've used the framework. I've done all the, the detailed research. I've got the data points and the data points in the research are pointing to a good selling product or product bundle. So I'm not saying you have to go over here and be like, yes, this is my million dollar idea. This is my meal ticket. This is my pay dirt. I'm also saying you can't sit over here and go, oh, it's never going to sell. I'm not going to do it. It's going to be a failure. I'm going to lose all my money. Neutral zone. Point out the facts, right? Point out the facts about the situation. And we're going to talk about trusting facts, not feelings in just a minute. The next thing that you can do is acknowledge previous successes, not just in business, but in real life. You can do hard things. You are capable of doing the right things. You are capable of working hard. You have done it before. You have done all these things. Even if you're brand new to business, you have had successes in your life. How have you reached some of those successes, those goals? Think about them. Record five things in the past week that you've had success with. And guys, I don't care if it's I tried a new recipe and it turned out okay, uh, that nobody choked, nobody, you know, scraped it in the garbage can. That's a success. I do that all the time. I'm always pulling out weird recipes and everyone's like, what is this? But then they eat it and they're fine. So no one scraped it in the garbage. That's a success, right? But little tiny things. Now I know I'm always telling you guys to write stuff down. That's my MO. That's my thing. I love to write everything down because I will forget, number one. And number two, it's a brain body connection that actually helps people remember. So sometimes when I'm not in a place to actually put pen to the paper, I have a note-taking app in my phone. And when I don't want to forget something, I put it in there. And I can even do a voice text. I can send myself a Voxer message and be like, hey, don't forget this and this and this. Or, um, you know, if you got Siri, Siri, add this to my calendar on this day. You know, there's a great ways to be able to help yourself remember. Take note. The number one is because it will help you remember. It will make you more aware if you actually stop and go, oh, wait, I'm overthinking. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm in those ants, those automatic negative thoughts. How can I at least shift to the neutral zone, right? I'm not asking you to jump from, you know, way over here to way over there. I'm saying how, instead of that negative, say, how can I switch to the neutral zone? How about I neutralize this negativity just by saying, what are the facts? So one of those things is thinking about previous successes. When you're getting down, when you're getting frustrated, when you're getting worried, go back and look at the things that you've succeeded. You guys, we are terrible at this. We are absolutely terrible at this. We love when other people will pat us on the back and tell us of all of our great accomplishments and great things, but we're really not good at doing that ourselves. It's really a struggle for most people when you look and say, hey, what are, your good, what are you good at? What are your strengths? 
what are the things that you really feel like you excel at? Gosh, people have to think about that. But if you, if, if somebody comes to me and says, Kristen, what are you bad at? I can like literally list a bunch of stuff. I'll be like, okay, first of all, I'm bad at technology. I'm really bad at softball. I'm really bad at most athletic things. Um, I'm kind of, I mean, not necessarily uncoordinated, but to, you know, to a point, I'm not, I'm not great at those things. Um, I'm an okay driver, but I hate to drive. Like we can always point out a lot of the negative stuff, but it's a really a struggle when someone says, Hey, what are you good at? Hmm. Oh, I'm really good at admitting that I'm mediocre at most things. But if somebody says, what are you good at? Hmm. I am struggling to say that out loud to you right now. Like I'm answering my own question. What are we good at? So this is where I'm saying, okay, let's find little successes. I'm really good at making a quick meal out of whatever's in the fridge like a throw together kind of thing, no recipe, just like, hey, what's the leftovers in here? Throw it into a something and spice it up, doctor it up and make it a really good dinner without people going, oh, what is that? Like, I'm pretty good at like throwing stuff together. When I do like soup recipes, it's like kitchen sink soup. I'm always just adding a bunch of stuff and it turns out great. And everyone's like, oh, I want this recipe. And I'm going, ah, good luck with that. I just made this stuff up today. So I'm really good at those things, but it's really hard to admit what we're good at. Why is this hard? We should be celebrating ourselves and celebrating one, or at least celebrating other people and pointing out what they're good at so that maybe we can start owning this. So that's one of the things that you wanna pay attention to. Uh, the other thing is to, to curb this overthinking is to try to stay present in the moment. Instead of worrying about what might happen or what could happen or what could go wrong, focus on what you are in control of right now. You are not in control of Amazon or their algorithm, or how fast they check in your inventory. But you are in control of proper research and writing your listing and setting a price. So focus on what you're in control of and take action based on those things. There are plenty of ways to ground ourselves in present moments. Studies have shown too that in order to stay present, you can schedule your worries. Well, that's a great idea, I honestly will say. Schedule your worries. Schedule them in a 15 minute hustle and say to yourself, because we've said this before, but never in this kind of context, I'll worry about that later. Honestly, you're giving yourself permission and even a scheduled date on your calendar to worry about that later. So tell yourself, I'll worry about that later. I don't care if you pull it out right then and put it on your, put it on your calendar, worry about my bundle, not selling. And then like, just give it its own time and date. That way you can say, I'll take care of all the worries later. Right now, I'm going to focus on what I can take action on and what I'm in control over. Another thing that you can do to stay in the present moment is doing something, focusing on a single activity that brings you joy. We are all the kings and queens of multitasking. Hello, I am really, really good at being bad at multitasking. <laughs> You know, you think that you can play Candyland with your kid and also be writing emails to people at the same time on your phone. No way. They know you're not focused on them. That's not multitasking. That's selling yourself short. So focusing on a single activity that will bring you joy. I love to buy, sell, and trade um, jewelry of all kinds. I love jewelry, costume jewelry, and real jewelry, and old and new. Just, I, I love all the jewelry. So I'm always cleaning, um, making new pieces, selling pieces, getting rid of pieces, like just all the things. I love it. It's pretty. It brings, it's relaxing. It gives me peace to be able to play with the jewelry when I'm not working. So that's my single focused activity that I try to do every single day that brings me joy. If you don't have an hour, 15 minutes is sometimes just enough to be like, I get to do this when I'm done with this. So I, that's like the carrot that I dangle uh, um, above my head while I'm trying to get stuff done. So also write a list of things, put it next to your 15 minute hustle chart that you are in full control over. So when you tend to start worrying about whether or not something is actually going to sell or how much money you're spending on it or how much time you've spent on it, look at that list and take action on one thing writing a list of keywords, re reviewing the framework and reviewing the framework videos and what step that you're on, staying on a step until it's complete. Those are things that you can stay focused on. Those are things that you can take action on. Set a timer and stay focused. The other thing to stay present is to get out of your current environment. Now, I know this is hard with pandemic and everything's closed and, you know, quarantines, blah, 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 like all the stuff, but you can, no one says you can't go outside. I don't care if it's raining. 
go sit in your garage for a second, change your perspective, not just your visual perspective, but sometimes I feel like I'm constantly, constantly in my office. So sometimes I, I just bought a cart, like a rolling cart, like a tiny little skinny rolling cart, but I put all of my jewelry supplies on it because what I realized is that I'm in my office all the time doing work. And I feel like work mode all the time in here, but then my hobby's also in here too. So instead I've got this cart that now I roll out to the living room. And while my husband's watching a game or TV, or, you know, we're just all kind of hanging out in there. I don't feel like separated from them. So I roll my little jewelry cat out there and I'm playing and doing my different things, but I'm still involved in the conversation and it just changed the perspective. So speaking of changing perspective, that's not just changing what you're doing. It just get, helps you to refocus. If you ever overthinking a problem, you've got to walk away from it for a minute walk away, take a deep breath, get outside, go take a deep breath, look around, walk, even if you walk around your own property for just a minute, or if you're in an apartment, walk up and down the stairs or you know, some sort of fresh air, go sit on your balcony and then come back with a clear head. And while you're taking your walk or changing your environment for just a second, ask yourself those questions. What am I in control of? You're always in control of your response to something. Even if your initial ant, your you know automatic negative thought there is to always think of that negativity, you can shift into neutral. So instead of like, okay, yes, I'm feeling all these terrible, crazy, bad things. How can I shift into neutral? And so when you're taking your walk and changing or doing that joyful thing that you love, thinking about those things, it's just about your thinking. It's about changing that. And guess what? You are never too old to make a change. You are never to set in your ways to shift into something new. If it's not serving you, if it's not helping you, unsubscribe. And I don't mean just unsubscribe like social media, unsubscribe, unsubscribe from podcasts, whatever else. Unsubscribe from your own thoughts. Cancel your subscription to negativity. That doesn't mean you're signing up for all those sunshines and rainbows either. You're just deciding that you're no longer going to go on that path. You have full permission to be a different person today than you were yesterday. You don't have to stay stuck. You don't have to stay negative. You don't have to live that way. So every little step counts. If you are tired of being negative and always in worry and always in anxiety and always in fear mode, you're never too old to change. These are how you do it. This is how you change your focusing. So thinking about those automatic thoughts, being negative and shifting just into neutral. I mean, hey, if you already come to me and say, oh my gosh, I've shifted into neutral and I'm working on that, then we can start shifting into more positivity. But hey, little baby steps, right? Every little step counts. Another concrete practical thing you can do, especially in business, when you're starting to make decisions and especially when it comes to investing is trusting facts, not feelings. How you feel about a situation and what is actually true about the situation is completely different. Honestly, it's usually completely different. Giving a situation an unbiased approach leads to better decision-making. Your emotions are not unbiased. You are fully attached to what is going on. Write down how you feel about the situation. Like we're going to go back to the bundle thing, right? Feel You feel like your bundle is not going to sell. You just have this fear of just like, oh, what if it doesn't? What if, what if, what if? And you're thinking about all the worst case scenarios and you're already trying to solve a negative problem that hasn't even happened yet. You're good at problem solving. You're just solving the wrong problem. You need to solve how you feel about the situation. It doesn't mean your feelings are going to change. It means your actions change. So let me, let, let me dig deep into that because this is a whole chapter in my book. And obviously this is one podcast episode, so I can't keep going over and over all the different things. We should just have a whole full episode on each chapter of the book. That might be what I do in 2021 because these are so relevant to learn these skills. This is a new skill to learn. So write down, a, take a survey of what is true and factual about the situation. What is controllable by you, by other people? What is factual? What are the facts? Not how you feel. Your feelings are not the facts. Feelings are fine. Feelings are relevant. Feelings are valid, but they're not facts. 
So take a survey of what's true and factual about the situation and what is controllable. And then go to the worst case scenario. I mean, have at it, have your cake and eat it too here, worst case scenarios, but also balance it with all the best case scenarios. What's the worst that can happen? What's the best that can happen? And then with all of the information that you have, evaluate what is most likely to happen with three proofs to back it up. Okay. So let's just use this little example. You feel like your bundle won't sell. Hello, feelings means fear. What is true is that you went through the framework steps. The data and the research shows that there is a demand for your products. You have good keywords and there's good demand with numbers that fall within the guidelines. Facts. The frequently bought together sections show that the customers are purchasing these things on a regular basis, the things that you intend to bundle. Check. The numbers show that you will make a comfortable product, a comfortable profit check. Worst case scenario is that you don't sell a single bundle. And after six months, despite changing and updating and reworking the listings, you've lost all that time, all that money, all that energy. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you sell out the first day, all of your test bundles get to the warehouse and you have to scramble to buy more. And then what's most likely to happen is within a week or two, your products are going to start selling and you can continue to reorder or update the listing and reflect any new changes and create more sales for yourself. Proof with that, you went through the framework and did the proper research. You've got strong keywords and the numbers are showing that there's a good demand for your product. Those are your proofs. That's how you can just move on. Okay, you've got feelings, you've got fear, but these are the proofs and that's how you do that. And the number one antidote to overthinking, to worrying, to fear is to take action. No matter how small, take action. Sometimes you might go over the same thoughts repeatedly because you aren't taking any concrete actions about the situation. Can't stop thinking about what could go wrong Instead of having it ruin your day, you can help those feelings turn into better choices. Being proactive about these things is really, really helpful. So take small action no matter what. Maybe the action that you take is walking away for a day and saying, I will come back and do this tomorrow. Y'all have no idea, but I literally just had to do this um, just today. I recorded this episode once already today totally fine. Got went about my day, went to convert the file. The file was corrupt. It would not convert. And I had to literally start over. Yes, that's frustrating. That's annoying. I tried every old which way. I actually tried solving the problem for 45 minutes before I realized that the file is corrupt. There's nothing I can do. I can't go back. I can't go forward. And I just have to move forward and record this episode again. And I was thinking the good Lord knew that I needed to say all this stuff out loud, not once, but twice. You guys, I am with you. I'm not talking to you. I am linking arms with you and talking to me because you guys, I need this. I need this as much as you do. And so I think the Lord just needed me to repeat myself a couple more times so that I can solidify these things in my life. Just take the action, right? Trust the facts, not how I feel about it, and move from negativity and worry and fear and anger and frustration to neutral. It might not be perfect, but it's going to be okay, right? And then the other thing is to really ask for help, right? That's probably the hardest thing for many people. I'm very independent. I like to do things on my own. I don't mind asking for help, but I really got to need it. And honestly, I need it way more than I think there is. You do not have to go anything alone. We have groups for this. We also have this thing called a therapist. Now, I know a lot of people, you guys just cringe. Some of you guys hit under the table and other, other of you guys raised your church hand. It was like, hey, that's me. Listen, there is no shame in that. There's no shame in therapy. There is no shame in talking to a counselor or somebody or a mentor or a coach or somebody that can come alongside of you seeking out help. Look, we don't know what we don't know. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. We all have baggage. We all have uh, all kinds of different things. And just getting a different perspective is really, really helpful. Getting that different perspective from somebody else. Look for a supportive person, a group, something like that, that you can be honest and open with. 
share your worries with the intent of moving past them. Look, misery loves company. And we all have that friend or that family member or that person that is just kind of that venting person, right? Like the person that you're going to say, oh, this and this and this happened. And they're going to jump right on your train and start driving it. Like, oh yeah, girl, I can't stand this. I can't, you know, like the, the, the complaining sessions, right? Not necessarily gossipy, just like, you know, the person that's not going to encourage you to move forward, but they're going to actually just join you in your misery and just add fuel to the fire. Um, There's a time and a place for those types of people. But what I'm, I'm talking about real support, someone that will listen and understand, and then give you some practical steps to move past what you're going through. For those of you guys that are in the hub, that is a great place to be able to do this. Go to people and just, venting is allowed with the intention of seeking help and not just complaining because we all we don't you know we all have a gripe every now and then especially dealing with amazon but instead of just griping come with the intent to get answers and to try new things that's another thing that you can do to curb your overthinking is really to get a different perspective from somebody different than you So quieting your fears and your thoughts requires stepping out of your normal perspective, your normal comfort zone. How you see the world is shaped by your experiences, your values, your assumptions. Looking at situations from a different point of view can really help. So if you're female, ask a male. If you're older, ask someone younger. Ask someone of a different race, of a different religion, of a different culture, of a different area in the world. If you're from Texas, ask somebody from Michigan. They're going to see things differently. It's just the way it goes. So ask people in the hub, hey, I'm from this town. I mean, Amy and I used to talk about this all the time when we talked about um, a Volkswagen VW bug. Um, she came over one time and I know I've told the story before, but I just think it's hilarious. And this really proves my point of different perspective. She grew up in, I grew up in the Midwest. She grew up in the East coast and, um, she calls that VW bug, a punch buggy. We call it, um, a slug bug in Michigan. That's just, Oh, slug bug, you know, the, the Volkswagen beetle. She said punch buggy. And we all looked at her like she had two heads. We're like, what is a punch buggy? I mean, we totally understood, but that's the whole idea is perspective is everything. And especially when it comes to Amazon and products and everything else, more perspective is better because you can reach more customers that way. So even create a poll on your social media, widen your understanding of the problem you're facing and get a couple of different ways of input and then use all of that to better and a different perspective. It really will give you insight that you've never had. Asking for help is totally cool. There's no shame. It doesn't make you weak. It makes you human and normal. We don't know everything. And and we all know somebody who thinks they know everything. And we usually don't want to hang out with that person. Someone that's always right. They don't need any help. They don't want any help. They just, you know, their way is the best way. You know, we don't want to be that person. We want to be open to understanding the world as the world and not just how we see it from our seat, because there's many other perspectives. So if you're not in the hub, I encourage you to join the hub. If you're a wholesale bundle student, it's exclusively for you. Go to mommyincome.com slash hub. Um, speaking of that, there is an extended version of this overthinkers guide to the wholesale bundle framework inside the hub as of right now. I actually created a framework checklist for you to be able to go through and Each step has a step-by-step goal and a checklist where once you've reached this goal, you move on to the next step. No overthinking allowed, no anything there. So in the hub, there's going to be your checklist. You want to go to the overthinkers guide and download your checklist. Keep it on your desk reference it often because honestly, who it's just a little bit more of help. It's almost like me on paper form sitting next to your desk, nudging you gently along. You're welcome. (laughs) So mommyincome.com slash hub or log into your student portal and you can get that checklist right here right now and help you move through the steps of the framework so that you can trust facts and not feelings. You can move to the steps a little bit faster and you can stop overthinking in your business and really start making more positive decision making. Honestly, we waste way too much time in our lives worrying about stuff that we cannot control and it's easier said than done. But with these practical steps, these things will help you move forward past it. Remember, you just want to shift into neutral zone. 
So with that, a quick reminder that the Dallas Marketplace is the beginning of January. If you want to join me for a walkthrough and a happy hour and have intro to wholesale as part of the course material for that, mommyincome.com slash walkthrough. And I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.